It's not about motivation. When is need discipline? Wake up and win today. <laughs> discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Box Road. Ben Shalom. Ben, it's been a while. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, what an event. Yes, yeah, crazy. The turnout today was uh, on a good Friday. People are excited about this card. Even just starting with Babich Robinson and the way they kicked off. And uh, it's chaos. I think the card from top to bottom is unbelievable. I think it's amazing to have our fighters at the level where they're attracting. You know, if you look down the card, Fraser Clark debuted with us. Ben Whitaker debuted with us. Florian Marku, Callum Simpson, Vidal Riley been with us a long time. And it's great to see them now taking real steps in their career and, and, and making big headlines. And yeah, unbelievable main event and a, a brilliant card and definitely the best outside of pay-per-view. For me, the best British card of the year. And uh, just delighted, even as a fan, I'm excited. I am really am. I remember you saying about a year or so ago, give us time, there'll be moments where we're going to put our guys together and they'll be in 50-50 fights and credit to you, you've, you've done it. Yeah, I think uh, it always takes time and especially starting the stable from scratch. You know, if you think back to when we started, we had Chris Eubank Jr., Josh Taylor, um, Amir Khan. We had to have fighters that weren't necessarily with us to help headline shows. So definitely feels like a milestone to have all our fighters now getting to the point where, you know, Fraser Clark's headlining the O2 in his ninth fight, ninth professional fight, set to become potentially the fastest British heavyweight champion of all time. And Vidal Riley, I have to say, for me, that's the that's the fight of the night. That's a fight that Vidal's demanded. I would never push him into something like that. He's a young fighter learning, become English champion, but he's now going in there with a wounded animal one of the most ferocious punches in the division that, if I'm honest, did not perform against Isaac. I've been with him a long time and he's ready. You can see a different stature in Mikhail Lewell. Vidal's going to have to be on, 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 on really on point and, and put in a career best performance to come through. And so, yeah, Florian Marku in the same way, taking a fight he doesn't need to take, which is a huge 50-50 fight. Incredible card. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, one of the things you said that I picked up, he said it's the British card of the year. You know, last week, Machin put on a great event and I was looking at that thinking, how does somebody compete with that, do better? And obviously, you, you put a, a brilliant show on uh, similar sort of fights, four, five, 50-50 fights. But I think there's no real fights on here where, you know, you're just like, there's the journeyman in the corner. Callum Simpson's opponent's got some losses, but even that is a big puncher. I think there's not many cards that break into non-boxing fans. We're seeing this take real interest outside of the boxing circles. We expect huge audiences coming in off after Man City Arsenal. And you can only, I think with Ben Whitaker's stature and Vidal Riley's and Fraser Clark, a British heavyweight, go in for probably the biggest British title in so long. It's one of those cards, as I say, that grows the sport. I think, yes, we see good cards, but there's not many that, that cross over. This is one that's absolutely monstrous and sold so well in the O2 something that's going to be seen all around the world and I, I think we're hoping to break records coming off the back of Man City Arsenal I think three and a half four million people will be watching that and what a great advert for British boxing I just want to get your uh, insight into you know when you're negotiating with a fighter like Fabio Wardley because I asked Eddie Hearn and Frank these kind of questions as well like obviously he kind of freelances he'll fight whatever he wants but you as a promoter you want Obviously, if he wins or if he loses, you want kind of options on that fighter. How difficult is it kind of negotiating a fight with somebody who, who's not willing to commit to any promoter? It's definitely different, um, but it worked for Dillian White his whole career. And there were less options then. Um, and there are a lot of options now, but look at the way Fabio's done it. And he's earned some serious money at British level. He's gone to, uh, he was at Matchroom. He's built his career there. He's then gone to Saudi on a Queensbury show. He's had a huge payday there. He's then come in and headlining on Sky at the O2. And, and it, a lot of it's down to him being a free agent. It doesn't always work for everyone. It means that you're taking a huge risk every time you step in the ring. You're going to be out of contract, but his management team like it that way and you have to respect it. And so, to be honest, it's fairly straightforward when there's a fight there that they like and you've got it and you can, you can put them on the biggest platform. They know what that Dillian White, Anthony Joshua fight did for both of their careers. Even though Dillian didn't come out on top that night, look at the career he went to have 
after that and I think it's going to be the same for both of them as I say this is an event that will cross over this is an event where non-boxing fans are going to be tuning in and you don't you don't get to say that very often and that's what they've seen that's what they've seen the opportunity to come and do and uh, may the best man win and it's worth uh, noting that I think Fraser's a lot of people are highlighting and bringing up the the fact that the fact didn't happen two fights ago but the point is, and I think people are missing this, that he could have avoided this. He could have gone down a different route. He could have gone down an international WBA title or a WBC silver. There's so many titles out there. And he could have said, well, I'm going down the world title route. But he's chosen to have this after two fights. And you promised the fans that this would happen. And I think he probably needs to give, be given the credit that he stepped up and he backed up what he said he was going to do a year ago. He would have fought him on his debut. You saw the fuss he makes. I'm glad I'm seeing him angry because I do need a wound up Fraser Clark because for me he'll beat he'll beat Fabio Wardley. He looked too friendly in that presser. Yeah, but I think ultimately he wanted this fight from the start. It felt irresponsible to me after 6 rounds to 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 go yeah, you know what, fuck it, go into the British title regardless of who it's against. I feel like we, as a promoter I always have to look myself in the mirror, especially with someone that that puts their faith in me doesn't matter how much criticism that the team takes and it comes down to a team making a decision and I think it's been proven right and for both guys and I think even Fabio recognises that this is a huge fight this is a huge narrative it's been going on for a long time they get to settle it at the 0-2 I'm delighted to provide Fraser the opportunity I really am and uh, he deserves it I think he'll win on Sunday night I think he'll prove a lot of people wrong but either way it's a massive fight for British boxing and and both guys deserve a lot of credit because they built an absolute monster. Two quick questions for you, Ben. Uh, Lee Wood, in an interview yesterday, said that he wasn't happy with the purse he was being offered by Matchroom um, in regards to a rematch with Josh Warrington. And he said, and I'm assuming he's a free agent because he suggested that he's going to speak to other promoters if, if needs be. Would you be interested in staging Josh Warrington, Lee Wood? Um, look, it's a great fight. Right now, if I'm honest, we are focused very much on the fighters that we've signed. I think if you look over the past few months, I've almost gone quiet because I've been like, you know, what does what matters? Needed to get T Natasha Jonas her homecoming. Needed to get Bawatsi and Aziz their big fight. Needed to get Lauren Price a world title, Lauren Sokoli a world title, Richard Riatpo his world title, Fraser Clark his fight. So I take that very seriously. I think the fighters that have put their faith in us, I have to deliver for. That's our focus first. Obviously, I'm, you know, every promoter will, will look at that fight and want that fight. But right now, yeah, we're focused on the fights that we're doing, trying to put on the biggest British cards that we possibly can and making sure our fighters are, are, are achieving their dreams, achieving the opportunities that, that they want. But the big gate not interest you because it, it brings a big gate that? Definitely does. But look. So obviously you hear things and, and, and you and you know you know who's available who's not as I say never say never I'm sure if he wants to have the conversation they'll have the conversation but as I say right now we've got some big events planned last question Adam Azim you said yesterday within 24 hours we're going to get uh, an answer how close are we to that answer I think we're close I think Shane's uh, coming to the hotel as I say they've got a couple of good options on the table and uh yeah, whatever. What, what are the other options? <laughs> we'll find out next week. And um, as I say, today I'm here for Wardley Clark and I cannot wait for this show. And uh, and next week we'll find out where we go with Adam Azim. Ben Shalom, thank you as always. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.